Welcome to the Fusionary Health Podcast. So I have an incredible guest with me today. This is Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. She blends proven leading edge science and ancient wisdom traditions that help people release their chronic pain by using the mind, body, and breath so that they can become empowered creators of their own health. Her own personal experience of reversing her crippling rheumatoid arthritis using natural solutions inspired her to leave a 30-year engineering career and become a functional medicine certified health coach, certified yoga teacher, and wellness educator. She has a design blueprint that's helped thousands of people release chronic pain naturally and has her own podcast, writes articles, and has created an entire summit on chronic pain. So welcome, Jane. Thanks so much for having me here, Shivani. I'm really excited to be here to talk to your community and um, just can't wait to see where we go with this today. Awesome. Thank you. So first, I'd love for you to share your story because this topic of chronic pain is not one that I think most people think about. I think it takes until we're in a disease state or until we're in our later years when we've generated that rheumatoid arthritis, chronic osteoarthritis or these different pain states. So I'd like to dive into chronic pain with you today, but first let's dive into you and your story and what brought you to where you are. Yep. I was, I was just carrying on having a great life. Um, turned 50. My kids were growing up, just coming up to the freedom years, right? Retirement was a few years away and had our empty nest and things were going well. I, I'd had a, um, a very traumatic event in my life, like the year before my mother died suddenly and we were very close and I had a lot to deal with and, you know, family stuff, all these things as a result of that. And so a year after that, I like within three months, I went from being strong and healthy to being barely able to walk, not able to make a fist with my hands, swollen joints, swollen knees, a lot of pain, couldn't sleep at night. It was, but it was really sudden, like within three months. Oh. And um, I, th- I thought, well, it was just a stress. You know, I got my mother's house sold and took care of all the contents. And I thought, okay, that's over now. It's going to be fine. But I, I didn't get better. Hmm. And uh, luckily we didn't really know what it was. And uh, luckily my family doctor said, sometimes foods can cause joint pain. So I'm like, what? <laughs> I'd never heard of this before. This sure. was in 2016. Mm-hmm. And um, so she said gluten and dairy and sugar. Actually, she, she said gluten and dairy, but I cut out sugar because I only really had sugar in baked goods and stuff. So I cut cut them out cold turkey and within five days had a big reduction in pain. And it flipped me around to being a feeling like a victim and things out of control now being empowered. And it took me on a whole, a whole investigation. And I would say experiment with myself on how to heal without medications. Eventually I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, but by then I was starting to kind of do this research on natural healing, discovered functional medicine and um, and I kind of went along from there. I also had like this little bit at, at my worst moment, I would say, just in so much pain, didn't know what it was. This is before I tried the food. I had like this, I don't know if you'd call it a spiritual event or like someone talking to me, I but I heard a voice that said, your life isn't going to turn, you're, you're not meant to turn out like a life of chronic pain. Mm. You will figure this out and you will teach other people. So I kind of had this like belief that I was going to figure it out. And so I did, I like kept on going and, you know, eventually I realized like just changing food is not the answer. There was a whole lot of different things I had to work on. Like we, I had to work on myself, like my thoughts and my feelings and really pull it all together. And uh, so I would, I would work on something and plateau a little bit and then go a little bit further. And eventually, uh, eventually I just came to this beautiful peace, place of peace where I have no pain anymore. And then I did leave my engineering career to help other people. So 
it's uh, my, my, my voice that spoke to me. It's come true. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's, that's such a, a powerful journey to go on. Like talk about the hero's journey. You were going about your life normally. You had one traumatic event. So many of us have those traumatic events with the death of our parent or a loved one. Um, it caused a tremendous stress reaction in the system. We know stress impacts the body, but I think we underestimate how powerfully it impacts the body, especially those major life events. And um, I oftentimes think surgery or any major life event, if we don't give ourselves that space to heal and recalibrate, reset the gut, reset the nervous system, and we just think we can enter normal life, the body's not ready for normal life pace yet. And then you had this experience of extreme suffering of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, And so I'm so glad that you had the right practitioner who kind of set you in the right direction, that food was the right way forward, and then became so empowered to continue on. So on that journey of rheumatoid arthritis, will you just share, you know, I think, I think a lot of people understand that there are autoimmune conditions and within those autoimmune conditions, one of them is rheumatoid arthritis. I'm one of those people who had not even heard about it until I owned a turmeric company. To be honest, like I had heard that there's rheumato- rheumatoid something or arthritis something, but it, it, no one I know has it. Uh, everyone in my family is diabetic. So I know a lot about diabetes and the end game horrids co- that come from diabetes. And it's why I live my life the way I do. So will you kind of share overall, like what is the the disease state of rheumatoid arthritis and and why it happens and, and what are some of the things people should look at or what are some of those symptoms that people should pay attention to that add up to it? Yeah. You know, I hadn't really heard of it either, except that I heard my mother say, I remember uh, someone saying to her, do you have rheumatoid or osteo? She said, osteo, thank goodness. I mean, that was about all I had ever heard about it. Sure. I didn't have anyone in my family with autoimmune disease, which in some ways is kind of a good thing because a lot of people think, oh, it's in my family. So it's inevitable. And we know that that's not true now with the whole field of epigenetics, less than 2% of our genes are responsible for permanent anything, let alone illness. So most, almost all illnesses are, it's a combination and really it's the environment that turns it on. So, um, so your question was, uh, what was it, the, the experience for me? So, yeah, so I didn't really know anything about it. And, um, so it was all, all brand new to me. And what I've come to realize, I didn't really, well, what I knew at the time was that it was stress because there's no way I went from being healthy and strong to all of a sudden. So I knew that there was a stress component. And now that I've interviewed, because I I have my own podcast and I hosted this summit, I've, I've interviewed like hundreds of people now and pretty much everyone in the natural space will say that stress whether it's a whether it's an internal or an external stress, but e- either one are, is responsible for the body to begin to go out of homeostasis, sure. and then you could really develop anything, and that probably just depends on your genes, like where you may have like a weak link or something like that. But like I think t- I think taking away the labels sometimes is helpful to say it doesn't matter. It's just our body is not in homeostasis and how do we return it to homeostasis? Because the healing, the body will heal if we give it the right environment. But what I did learn just because I started like studying rheumatoid arthritis a lot and the mind body component is huge. So here are some things uh, when, so I've mentioned it's stress. So a lot of these stresses develop in childhood before the age of seven. And what I, st- what I started to see, and then what I learned was proven by some science and written about by many, uh, in, in many books, um, is that people pleasing, perfectionism, a hypersensitivity, a hyper, uh, hyper uh, vigilance, right? Always like, do they like me? Do they not like me? Is it uh, being sensitive to criticism? These types of, I, I won't call them personality traits because they're really not personality traits. They're behavioral adaptations we, cr- we created when we were children in order to deal with the stress that we couldn't deal with at the time because we couldn't fight. 
We couldn't flee, right? So we learned fawning. That's, I don't know if you've heard about that, but fight, f- fight, flight, freeze, and fawn is the other one that's coming up a lot now as that response of the nervous system to stress. And so fawning is that, okay, how can I help you? Always doing things for other people and then sort of being resentful that you're always the one that's doing things. So these are really, really common. And I know, I know in Ayurveda as well, you talk about like, I was a very Pitta personality, right? That people pleasing perfectionism. And, you know, I still have that tendency that I have to, I have to really, um, be aware of and then realize that it's coming up and then release it really getting into the body work of releasing it sure so it's interesting when you look at all these things and and not to accept that well that's just my personality that's the way i am it's there is something you can do about it sure that was very enlightening that's a very powerful point you just brought up, but it's interesting. I was interviewing my yoga teacher on my podcast earlier this week, and she shared about perfectionism. And I, I kind of pulled back off the mic and just started laughing because I was like, how are, how is everyone bringing up these topics? But every descriptor you just named for not quite a personality type, but a tendency, describe me and describe my daughter. And I mm-hmm. thought, oh, these are those patterns. So although we may not hand down our genetic diseases so strongly, what we are handing down is our exact patterns that are being mimicked generation to generation. So although um, diabetes might not directly be 95% likely for me, maybe only a couple percent, I was handed down a diet, sleep patterns, you know, lifestyle patterns, sedentary patterns. And so it's our job to kind of break those lifestyle habits that we've been handed down when we realize how detrimental they are to our health. And then when we look at these tendencies of our nature to be a certain way, those too can be so detrimental. Like I do sit down with myself and say, gosh, if you weren't such a perfectionist, you would not be so stressed out when the plate has a hundred million things on it, you know? Um, Can you dive a little bit into that and, and how you personally break through it? Because I don't think it's easy. It's in my nature that if I'm going to something and I know my friend will be there, I pack tea for her too, or I pack food for her too, or I pack a sweater for her too. Like, I don't want anyone next to me to have less than me or not be as comfortable as me. And and it's it's hard to break those tendencies. Mm -hmm. Well, I think aware of it is the beginning part always, right? Just like noticing, oh, I'm here I go again. I'm doing it again. And right. uh, because, and that's not always easy because um, uh, I remember Mary Morrissey saying this, this expression I love, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, right? So sometimes it's hard to see it, but with awareness, you can see it. And maybe if you've got someone in your life that can kind of point it out, but you also know it by the, by the, your triggers, Right. So the things that trigger you or, you know, bother you. And really, it's like any time we're not feeling good, those are our triggers. But they are there to awaken us, to show us the way out of this so that we can release those the the, the pattern of behavior, the emotions that are held in us somewhere to that manifest in this behavior. So awareness is really key. And I think Something else that's really important is um, is connecting with our body again. So you probably know a lot about this from your background, but really noticing, not getting into a story about it, and like even with even knowing that sometimes these behavioral adaptations come from childhood. It's like, ooh, what happened? And you want to go back and remember and analyze, and that's not helpful. Actually, it kind of reinforces it more, if anything. So we just want to go, oh there's the trigger. Where do I feel it in my body? Like for me, it's my, I don't know about you, but my solar plexus, I had no idea it was so tight all the time. Even now as I'm talking, I can feel that it gets tight there. That's my spot. Or like I had a lot of um, neck and shoulder pain, right? Always like going to the chiropractor and getting my neck adjusted. So so these are signs that, okay, this is where I'm holding it in my body. So, so then the next part, once you know where it is in your body, like how can you release it? And you don't even really have to think about releasing it. We just want to give it loving attention. Mm-hmm. So I like to, 
um, use this idea that this area of my body that's showing up as like tightness or a hurt or a little like whatever it is just imagine it's like a small child or a pet and that you breathe into it with this with that that loving the way you would love and cherish a small child or a pet if they were hurt like that's you would say oh Oh, my love. Okay. I got you. It's going to be okay. I'm here. I'm here for you. And just imagine breathing into it and breathing through it. So directing its uh, attention to it Mm. helps energize it. So so looking at it from that energetic perspective. Sure. Because let's just remember quantum physics is just now proving what what these ancient traditions have been saying for thousands and thousands of years that we are energy everything is energy and so if we've got that little area it's energy not flowing so when we focus our attention on it and 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 imagine i use the breath like to kind of imagine breathing through that is like energy flowing so it's going to open it up and then the body gets the message i don't have to hang on to this anymore it's okay Right. So that's, that's kind of a basic process that I can, I use. I love that. I love kind of seeing it as like a little knot or a little something like a little disturbance or, or like a tightening and then breathing through it to kind of release it and let it go. Because otherwise we have so many different things. I, I sometimes think of it as a paper cut. Like if I'm having an issue mentally about drama or something, I'm like, why are you letting paper cuts happen in your life? You don't need to do that. And then I'll look at it and I'll say, and now as I age through my decades or years, I really look at it from a different maturity standpoint where I'm like, you know what? I get to always remember this thing for this person. Isn't that nice? Like that, that we're so close that this is something I get to do. Like, can, can we turn it around to the positive? And if you catch something in your daily life, like today I dropped the kids and we have like a carpool line and a walker carpool line and the walker carpool line are so dumb and they totally misbehave in how they park. And I'm like, I wish I could just bring order to this. And then I'm like, Shabani, do we really need to bring stress into our physical body every morning at 8 a.m.? Like, are you really going to do this for the whole nine months of the school year? So I laughed at it and I was like, how about you show up five minutes early? And then this is not the physical reaction. And so I wonder if we could all avoid causing chronic stress and chronic pain by just changing the behavior pattern, which is what you're talking about. Like change your pattern going into it, which will change your response to it as well. Exactly. I mean, that, that was a perfect uh, example of, oh, I was getting annoyed. Right. So that means there's a trigger there. Yeah. What, what's behind? Well, actually we don't even need to get into the story. So if you can, can you take yourself back there now and feel mm-hmm. in your body where you felt it? Yeah, my necks and shoulders just lock. Right. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. level of annoyance. Yeah, so your neck and shoulder. And so, you know, you might imagine like breathing, uh, breathing in like all around, like as if it was like a donut, breathing in and then exhaling in every direction and kind of going, I, I got you, you know, I'm here. Oh, you're calling my attention. But yeah. I, I hear you. I'm not going to let you down anymore. You can, you're okay. You know, I like saying that too. I, you know, in this moment, you're fine. You're safe. You don't have to hang on so tight. Because uh, these tight tight areas, it's kind of, um, one of my mentors, Dr. Sue Mortar, calls it defense physiology. Hmm. We're creating defense physiology for sure. These things that we like way, way, way back when, for whatever reason, right? Um, so I like to say that whole idea that you don't have to hang on so tight. It's okay. You can, you yeah. can let it go. And then the other part of all of this, and you probably know about this really well too, is the connection with the chakra. So sometimes the, uh, the area that's giving you trouble, uh, we know we have a little bit more information there, right? Through the chakra. So the neck and the shoulders, that's all about like expression, right? So maybe you haven't been speaking your truth or there's something that you, you maybe way back when, when you were little that 
you weren't allowed to speak your truth. So you're maybe holding on to tension there because of that. So all that breathing, you know, that scent, like breathing up and down through the core, imagine coming, you know, in from your head all the way through your neck and like really energizing that whole area helps all the chakras get a little, a little bit of love. True, true. And, and it is something that we teach in Ayurveda that, you know, you can manifest disease from the, not even can't, oftentimes we're managing and building energy. We're creating disease in our energetic body far before we create it in the physical. Like yeah. we're talking about the physical last, yes. but it's really it's what's so created. Downstream. Yeah. And so if we could really do the work of clearing our auric field and and clearing our own chakras and keeping everything in this powerful alignment and flowing and moving. I do that through yoga. When I go to yoga, I'm like, okay, this is my time. And I get to tune in and clear and check in with everything. Um, but it's such powerful work that we can do. Um, but we think of health as like water and the food we eat and the exercise. Like we think of it so mechanically and physically, and it could be such deeper layers than that. And sometimes nowadays, when I want something for my business or in my life or physically, I really approach it from the energetic first. I'm like, this is what I'm hoping to create. This is the energy field or the energy ball I want, and or this is the seed I want. And then I create from there and then eventually get to the physical work of it. It, it's so much faster, right? And and like you said, the our, the physical man, the physical manifestation of this physical body is the last thing. You know, everything happens energetically first, um, and it's our mind that creates our body. I, uh, Deepak Chopra, I heard him interviewed. I think it was fairly recently, and he said the the body is not a um, it's it's not a thing. It's a process. So we're constantly processing through our mind, you know, our energy through the mind, which then creates the body. It's a subconscious mind that runs the body. And so what are we putting, what are we putting in there? So it does start at that energetic level first. And it's so much faster if you only ever work on the physical. And that's what I was doing in the beginning. Sure. I was only working on the physical. And uh, so I would, I, yeah, it certainly helped. But it wasn't completely gone because there were energetically, there were still like the, you know, these things that I still have from childhood, uh, these, you know, all of that was still, it's like an, it's an internal stress that is kind of like un, an undercurrent of things aren't totally safe. Right. So all of our cells are getting that message. Correct. It's not totally safe. So, you know, I kind of still need to be defensive here, right? That's that's what that state is when we're in that sympathetic state. It's like, I got to have a little bit of a defense there. So how can all of our attention go to being healthy and, and living our best life? And the thing is, when you think about it that way, about being in the sympathetic nervous system, most of us, most of the time are in our sympathetic because we've got so much to do, so much going on. For me, I've got young kids. They're in elementary and middle school. So Life is really the structure of my life is based on them. And then within that structure, I get to have my structure of the business and the things I want to create. But the whole day is like a, a brunt, like football game of, okay, we get up, we go. Okay, you got there. Oh, you forgot this thing. Sure. Okay, but I have to work out and shower and then I have to get to work and be my best self. And then meetings, 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 meetings. Okay, tea time, convert to motherhood enjoy motherhood, but then there's all the house management and everything else. And so I think about it sometimes as like, okay, how do you build rhythms of self-care? It's, it's the only reason I teach Ayurveda is, is I need this for myself. And the more I teach it, the more I practice it. Um, and I want the whole world to see how powerful it is. But going back to a thought we just had, and I don't want to forget it. When someone has a car accident, I always tell them, please go to the chiropractor. 
get that body readjusted because you just went through a huge trauma. And when you have a loss, I feel the same way. I had a very big loss this year. And I could tell afterwards, I was like, you know, you better do an Ayurvedic gut protocol. That just trashed your whole body and system. But also in my mind, I was like, I am not processing information the same. Something is going on. So I went to therapy and I talked to my therapist and I was like, I'm mad. She's like, okay, let's unpack it. And it took some sessions, but I had to unpack all the issues. You're right. It, it goes multi-generational of me trying to control everybody's health. And if, if everyone would just listen to me, everyone would be fine. And so we had to, to dig through that. And so my invitation to everyone is we're all going to have traumas. It's part of life. Yeah. But can we give ourselves like 60 days, maybe 90 days post to go through the healing modalities that support us best? So that we can fully clear them from all level, levels of our being, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and come out cleansed. And so can you kind of share on that? And, you know, you did this incredible summit and interviewed all the best experts. And I'm just curious, how did you, like, what is your synthesis of it? What were some of those points that you got out of it that you're like, gosh, these are those points that I wish the world understood? Yeah, I think for me, the big overarching picture was the role of stress. Uh, I mean, even the experts that were talking about more lifestyle or food, like I think everybody says you have to manage stress in your life now because it's stress. Stress isn't actually what's going on. It's how we respond to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I get where you are. Like, I remember how busy life was when I had three kids and all their activities and all that. But you know what? I'm still busy. So I think it's, you know, it's just kind of how we take things on and how we roll with it. And so I really have to work at even now when I don't have any kids at home have to work at making time for myself. So it's really great that you are uh, getting into habits now that can give you that little bit of space. And, and even, like I said, it's, it's, it's how we respond to stress. So to, to give yourself the space and grace to say, uh, yeah, my house may not be perfect. It's not all going to get done. My business isn't all, it's not all going to get done. I am, this is where I am right now. And what do I want to prioritize? And I mean, our kids, I know you, I can tell how much you love your kids and we only have our kids for a little while. Like it really is a short window when, uh, when you come on the other side of it, like I am. It is. It's going fast. Yeah. I mean, I really don't regret being, being there for my kids and doing all those things for them. And, um, even though it wasn't much time for me, hardly, I remember thinking, I don't even have time to think for myself. Like I do remember that. And actually that is part of being stressed, right? That when we are in that stress state, which most of us are most of the time, are, we're designed in that state to not be able to use our cognitive, that, that long-term kind of thinking. We go right into that limbic brain, which is the quick decisions like on instinct, because we don't want to be if I'm in a life or death situation, we go now, what are my six alternatives here? And what's the pros and cons? We, you know, we don't want to be doing that. So we're wired to just go right back to that limbic brain. And I notice this myself when I'm in stressful situations now, like, it's just like, I can't think like, oh my gosh, I can't remember the password for that. Like, wow. You know? So we, we get like that when we're stressed. So the more we can just go, okay, just breathe. That's why I love breath work. It's like, you've yeah. always got it. You can always just go, okay, let's just breathe. In this moment, I'm safe. True. It's all fine. It's all good. It's not going to matter. This isn't going to matter six months from now. Right. So uh, really having these tools in your toolkit that can help, you know, de-stress, calm down so that we not, we aren't reactive all the time. You know, you mentioned stress and, and I've been thinking about stress a lot as this thing that in the end, I will build an incredible health company. I know, I know it. It's like, I can see it, but the journey of the level of stress that I will undertake to build the thing I want in this lifetime might cause the disease states that I don't want at all. You know what I mean? And so it's, funny when you look at, if you can be a rational thinker and just look forward two decades, could we ever, as humans, look at ourselves and say, hey, 
I know stress creates a chronic disease impact on the body. I know that the punishment at the end of this tunnel is horrible. So what are some of your favorite tools to consistently reduce stress? And one word you've used a few times is safe. And I love that because when we're in the sympathetic, we're super stressed because something just triggered us. Maybe it's the mail, maybe it's the news, maybe it's a bill, maybe it's just a person who knows any number of things on any given day can trigger. Um, That powerful tool of just taking a huge deep breath and saying, I'm safe, you're Mm -hmm. just really quickly using the verbiage that your physical body needs to understand that, hey, you're safe right now. We're sitting in our car. Yeah, we don't like traffic patterns. That that doesn't mean the body is unsafe. I'm as safe in this car as I've always been. And so could you share some tools with our audience today? Because I know for a fact, managing stress is easier said than done because I myself struggle with it. Mm. I think it's always remembering that you always have a choice. Yeah. We always have a choice in how we respond. So if you can create that little bit of a gap there um, so that you can go, okay, I've got a choice. I've yeah. got a choice instead of being reactive. And the other thing I just like was thinking about this as you were talking about building your business and, you know, I've got these same dreams too, coming back to quantum physics and, you know, the, uh, the universal laws that say, we create our reality. So we can decide that it's going to be easy. Right. True. We can decide that. And we don't have to, because I, I, you know, I think we've got a lot of the same tendencies, right? That we tend to go fall back on, oh, so much to do. Um, To remember that we don't have to figure it all out. We we just got to have that vision, right? That vision. And we know that from the universal laws, from the ancient wisdom, what we're learning about quantum physics is that if we can envision it, it's already there for us. It's already making its way. Like we talked about manifesting in the energetic field, it's already making its way into physical reality if we don't block it. Sure. True. How do we block it? Stress. (laughs) Stress. <laughs> Stress yeah, is one way we block it. So, you know, for us to remember that, okay, my only job is to follow my my soul's desires, not not the, you know, not our egoic our, 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 our uh, uh what am I trying to the word I'm trying like to think ego driven like, desires. Our, our little, you know, sad people desires. Like I want yeah. a bigger house and all. It's not about right. that. It's like the bigger stuff that's calling from your soul. Yeah. All we've got to do is recognize that, picture it, believe in it, feel it, and yeah. then keep ourselves out of that stress state so it can flow to us. Sure. Um, right? So uh, so that's something to think about that, okay, remembering, okay, I always have a choice. I can always choose to keep to keep my stress levels down so that I'm not blocking, I'm not blocking my body from manifesting in a healthy way. I'm not blocking my life from manifesting in a healthy way or the, the way that I desire it to. So um and I have to remember this all the time, all the time too. I, you know, it doesn't come naturally to us. Right. right? We have to um be so aware, so aware. Yeah. And I think when we're high achievers, when we have that bit, that dosha on board, that fiery, like, I want to create things and do things and accomplish things and change the world that has its own tendencies, positive and negative. And so the negative is the overwhelmed stress and those kinds of things that we can bring awareness to. So I love that. Um, I saw you the other day gardening with carrots and I was like, why is Jane not my neighbor? I want to be like Jane. I want to pick carrots out of my garden. And then I thought you will never be that. Just stop it. <laughs> don't don't glamorize something like that. But I loved it. I was like, look at her doing the thing. So will you share a little bit about your your practice around food and wellness and all the things? I just I got so excited by it. Well, I I grew up like a, with a family of gardeners, although my parents didn't grow a ton of vegetables. But I think, well, I live in Newfoundland in Canada. You know, we don't, there's not a lot of farming around here. There's some, there's some. And so I just really 
want to grow my own food if I can, as much as I can, or like just get the best quality food. Because in, in Newfoundland, like most of our food, we're not a, um, I don't even think we're self-sufficient really in being able to feed ourselves right now. So much food brought in, of course, when it's brought in, it's packaged. It's probably lost a lot of its nutritional value by the time we get it. It's probably come from farms that the soil has been so depleted and sure. the animals are eating the food, chemical, you know, all of that stuff. So I just think, yes, I, there's, I love this manifestation stuff. I love keeping stress down. But on top of that, my cells are turning over all the time. And so I want to, I want to give them the building blocks. New cells are being made from the food that I'm putting in. So I want to put in building blocks of food, right? That's the best that I can do. And so that's, I, and I just love, I, I love planting these little tiny seeds and then they grow into food. Like how, what a miracle is that? It's true. No, it's so true. I, I have grown stuff with my kids and that's always been fun. And then I have orchids. Orchids are my favorite. Oh, and so I kill a lot of orchids in my home. And then I put them on the palm trees in the back of the house. And when those bloom, I'm in heaven. I'm like, wow. It's like we get to recurringly enjoy these orchids for the rest of our lives. Um, uh, so nice. I haven't been able to keep orchids. I don't no. know why. Okay. But I don't have tropical paradise. Yes. Yeah, we're in the tropics here in Florida. So we have entirely different things we can grow. Um, yeah. one, one question I wanted to ask you is, you know, as someone who coaches people in chronic pain, which is it's a distinct subset of clientele and, and patients to work on, um, do you have some success stories you could share? Because sometimes we need to hear that story of like, she had this and then she got to this. I know for me, those really click. I was like, okay, I have hope then. Yeah, I've had lots of them. People, you know, I when I first started coaching, I was very much more like about food and lifestyle. Like that that's the functional medicine background. Although functional medicine does also look at mind, body, spirit. Now I do a lot more about the power of the mind and using a lot of mind tools. Of course, we still need to feed ourselves well. Of course, we need to prioritize sleep. Of course, we need to stop putting toxins on our body and all that. But I, I think all of that is beautiful, um, but almost secondary to what's going on in here because pain is really interesting because we pain isn't really where we think the pain is. Pain is a message from the brain. And so uh, there's a few tools that I use for like, let's, let's stop that wiring because it's, it's the more pain you have, the more long, the long, longer it's been going on, the more the neural networks have been formed in the brain. And so some of the tools are about like, like, let's, let's lessen and start to break down those, uh, those neural networks. Um, so there's that. Um, and then also this manifestation. So What's really beautiful about the people that I work with is that we don't just go, okay, we're going to let's, let's focus on pain, even though I call my community living pain free and all that. We really just focus on feeling good. How do I feel good? So I have all these different tools for lowering stress, for uh, for noticing, really noticing the triggers that we were talking about. Like, where is that coming from and how let's go into my body and release it. And then maybe we might need some other tools. So I have experts in to talk about tapping and, you know, other eye movement and different therapies like that to help um release the subconscious beliefs that are there. Sure. Um, so I got a lot of people, but what, what's beautiful, the point I was trying to make is that it's not just the pain. So they're almost forgetting about the pain and yeah. they're talking about all these other great things. Their relationships are improving. They're uh, one of the ladies, she lives in New York City and she goes, I find a parking spot every time I go, <laughs> you know, I'm, money's coming in. Yeah. Because really when we're, when we are feeling good, everything it works on everything in our life right so we're not just like okay let's focus on the pain yeah. it's not that we're like let's just focus on feeling good notice where the triggers are get into your body to release it let's just let we'll do all of that and then the the program is like it's like the constant reminders because we're doing the coaching because i've got a 
um, a, a weekly lesson. It's always in the front of their mind because we talk about awareness and how important that is, right? So we need to be constantly aware of what's what's triggering me to not feel good. And then how do I feel good? And then when that happens, the pain goes away. Uh, other great things happen in your life. Um, you know, so it's, yeah, we're seeing all kinds of success stories. Uh, yeah, I, I had one lady, uh, she was in my program for a, a year. And um, I said, are you going to be renewing? She goes, you know, I, I feel, I feel good now. I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm done. And I mean, that's where I want people to go. And she said, yeah. you're my hero. <laughs> like, I'm not really her hero. Like yeah. she did it herself. This is what I say. Like the only person that can do this work is you. Correct. Even if you do things like you mentioned, like going to yoga and I, I teach yoga and breath work as well. And you know, that is great. We have these touch points where we keep coming back to those those feelings of letting go, of not feeling stress, of feeling good, feeling grateful, forgiving, you know, all of these things. But we can't just do it in these isolated times and then go back to being annoyed when the parking situation or the lane is bugging you, right? So it's those things where you've got to really notice Shivani, I'm calling you now. I'm calling you on this. You I'm glad know. you are. <laughs> I'm kind of a race car driver. So it's just funny. <laughs> like, it, it's funny to me, all the stuff around traffic and cars <laughs> totally resonates. Like I, I would use car analogies for health all day if I could. I'm like, you need gas in the tank. We need to stop <laughs> those oil changes. <laughs> So yes, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> so these are all beautiful little reminders. They're they're just like it's the school of life that's teaching you. I always say they're like giving you the yellow brick road of exactly what you need to work on. True. It's very it's true. Perfect. It's yeah. perfect. It is perfect. It's that perfect reminder. And sometimes it takes like the hundredth paper cut until you're like, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. But that is not functional. That's not going to help me. I'm just going to, I'm going to let that go. And when you can learn to let that go, it's yet another paper cut that we have released from triggering or bothering or adding up. And then we can move forward. Um, but I love what you said about pleasure because making it feel good is such a positive and beautiful way to get all of us to do the work because if it's always going to be, you have to, you didn't hydrate. Like a lot of my inner conversations, like you better drink two of these before noon or else. Like I have a lot of rules around food and health. And then I'm like, how about this? How about the more I hydrate, the more awesome I feel. How about we spin into the positive? How about, you know, that if you don't drink water, you'll have a horrible headache in the afternoon and you won't get to enjoy your evening. So for you to enjoy your best evening, just hydrate a couple bottles. It's okay. Um, but I love it. Even yeah. noticing what you did do and and being your own champion, saying, you know, that was good. You you did. You got two in. That was great. Totally. You know, so really being your own champion all the time. So how you, you like talking about how you talk to yourself is so important. Exactly. So important. exactly. And, you know, a lot of people that come to me have already because I tend to get people that are already interested in natural healing, right? So sure. they've already done like elimination diets and yes. then they're coming to me. They're like so stressed about food. And like, okay, let's just put all that aside. Yeah. I just want you to feel good. A lot Whatever of you need, I want you to feel good. Because if you're stressed about food, yeah, you're not even going to be, be absorbing the nutrients and all that. And it's just, you know, it's per perpetuating the stress. So you could be eating the best food in the world, but if you're stressed about it, it doesn't matter. So I'm definitely mu much more about feeling good. And they'll say things like, uh, you know, oh, like the holidays would be a big thing, right? There's so much, you know, this sweet things on it. Like have it and enjoy it. Just don't go unconscious about it. Like don't sit down and eat half the pie, you know, yeah. decide that you're going to have one piece and enjoy it. Just right. really enjoy it. Taste it. Notice the texture and the flavor and, you know, the people that are around you and just feel good while you're eating it. Absolutely. Just soak it up, enjoy it, and then continue to move on. And and I always say, don't poison your food. Like a lot of times yeah. we're eating and we're poisoning it. We're like, I can't believe I'm eating this. <laughs> As opposed that. to just, I'm going to eat the thing. I'm going to enjoy the thing. I'm going to let it digest and process. And tomorrow I'll do it differently. It's okay. I can have some joy. Mm. 
Yeah, I love that, Shivani. It's really good to, you know, you're poisoning your food if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, ah, hate this. <laughs> exactly. Poisoning it with that stress. So yeah, so I have loved this conversation today. Thank you, because I've not interviewed anyone yet on this topic of chronic pain and all the different ways that we can approach it in our bodies. Um, And we've gotten to dive into a lot of topics today. I have um, one final question. Is there anything today that you would love to share with our audience that we didn't get to talk about yet, or that's on your heart lately as like that thing you wish the world understood? I just really wish that people understood and we have probably talked about it, but just to really emphasize that, that we are the creators. We are the creators of our, of our health, of our life. Um, And we, we don't understand that. And so we're not really taking advantage of that, this immense power that we all have. Um, So that's the, that's the thing to really, and, and sometimes it's like too big of a concept for people to, um, really take in. So maybe just pick a little thing, you know, pick, pick a little thing, say, I'd like to see, um, I'd like for, you know, a a, a white pony to show up in the next couple of days, like whatever. Right. (laughs) And then see if something like that shows up, like, or whatever, make up something for you, but something that would be kind of out of the ordinary and then keep your eyes open to it. Mm -hmm. And just really understanding that we, we all, we have that, that ability to create, we have this immense power, we have this, um, all the knowledge there is available to us, if we can tap, tap into it. It's so true. It's so true. Thank you for that parting message today. I loved it. Beautiful. So will you share Jane, where people can find you and where it's easy to connect with you? Mm. Uh, well, there's my website, thewellnessengineer.com, and I have a podcast, The Wellness by Design, which you've been on as a guest. And uh, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook at Jane Hogan Health. And um, yeah, if you go to my website, thewellnessengineer.com, there's a right on the front page, you can download this free audio bundle. Um, it's got like this these three tools to help get you in that calm space and to start reprogramming your mind for health and for this beautiful power that you have. Awesome. I love that. That's so nice. Thank you. You're welcome. This has been so fun. I really love this conversation today. Awesome. Me too. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Check out our sponsor, Fusionary Formulas, the potent turmeric supplement used by doctors around the U.S. for patients with pain and inflammation. www.fusionaryformulas.com. I'm your host, Dr. Shivani Gupta. For more, visit shivanigupta.com. Subscribe to this podcast in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Click the follow button or subscribe in any of the apps that you use. That's all I've got for you on the Fusionary Health Podcast this week. You have the power to transform your health and achieve vibrant health starting today.